Well, hi folks. Uh, this is going to be pretty exciting. I'm very, very fortunate to be able to sit down and talk to what I've considered probably the, the master watercolour artist in the world, Mr. Joseph Zbukvik. How are you, sir? I'm very good. Thanks, Graham. And your beautiful wife, Lisa, is, uh, is holding the camera for us. Is that correct? She's going to get a sore hand, I think. <laughs> Another and Lisa, another fantastically talented human being as well. I've seen Lisa's work before, and it's like you guys really are. The Thanks, Brad. That's very kind to you. Not a problem whatsoever. So, Joseph, as you just saw yesterday, uh, which which is not to my surprise by any means, but you just hit a million viewers on uh, our CII World YouTube channel. I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, look, I'm still trying to get my head around it. You know, I mean, it's a number that's just bewildering. Uh, you know, a thousand or so. I've had up to, you know, 10, 12,000 hits on Instagram, and I thought that was amazing. But, uh, you know, compared to a million, that's nothing. Uh, I, I think that's just remarkable. And as I said, I had an interview with uh, Plan Air magazine yesterday, and I said to them, I, I'm still bewildered how I ended up where I have ended up. You know, I mean, it's been a long road. And I've, I don't think I've done anything special. I've just done what I do, you know, but I somehow ended up up here. It's quite bewildering. But it's, but it's a journey that, as you said before, you really did come from a, a, an impoverished family, from literally the cornfields in Croatia. It's true. To where, you, to where you are now. And I can remember you actually telling me last time that I was down there that you, you came home one day and you said to your dad, I've just made more, more money than you have. Being, of, yeah. being an artist, so uh, that was that was when I we moved to Geelong first, uh, which was a cultural desert in 1970. Uh, trust me, I remember the very first Sunday I decided to dress up as people do in Europe. I'm sure you've been there, and they promenade on Sunday. You know, they dress up and look for girls, and girls look for boys. So I decided to do this in Geelong. And the police, <laughs> well, the police car pulled up and took me home. <laughs> <laughs> Then I was going to be in trouble. You know, it just wasn't a dumb thing. And I was aimlessly walking around looking for people, but of course everyone was in cars or at home watching TV. Yeah. Uh, so there you are. It was a cultural shock, that's for sure. But yes, um, look, it's funny, you know, they say life is, you know, about making major decisions and being, you know, aggressive and knowing what to do. I think it's little things that happen. A couple visited my parents' home, Croatians who were also new, and they saw my drawing. And they, I don't know if you remember Pix magazine. Mm -hmm. oh, yep. <laughs> uh, they had a competition in there for drawing. So I sent in this drawing just for fun. They gave me the details. And I won a free course, which was useless. You know, they just wanted me to buy the Pix magazine. But that kind of started, I thought, gee, people here recognize what I'm doing. You know, I, I, so it was a tiny little start, but it was a start. And then someone else in the art shop, when I started to buy paints, told me uh, about this competition. And I put this crazy price of $80 on uh, painting, which my dad was earning $60 a week. This is 1970. Yeah, yeah. And sold, you know, I, I thought, I was just being silly, you know, I just yeah. thought, I'll do it. And the penny dropped, you know, that there, there's actually, you could make a living out of this. And then on it went, I started to look for other competitions and a gallery discovered me and it all just fell into place, all from that little visit from that little couple. I'm not saying it wouldn't have happened later, but it's just funny how things develop from tiny little things. But it's, it's amazing that, um... You go to, to China a lot these days, and obviously uh, with, with Lisa uh, being a Chinese lady as well, it's, yes. you've, opened up, you've opened up a marketplace in China, and basically they've, they've turned you into a rock star over there. You get mobbed at the airports, which I think is amazing. Look, it is. I actually have to have a bodyguard there, and I actually, I'm, sadly, I have a stalker there as well, which is not pleasant. Oh, that's uh, good. It's an awful feeling, trust me, someone walking behind you through shopping centres and things. Look, uh, I don't know what that is. I, get, I think they just like my work. I mean, China invented watercolour, basically. It was ink painting, but it was watercolour yeah. uh, thousands of years ago. And I think it's in their culture. 
to like watercolor much more than the Western people. We are into oils more. And I was discovered by a little gallery in Shanghai and had a show there. And I think I told you the other day, I was literally pressed against the wall in a corner by the fans and I could not move. And the right. security guards had to drag me away into a secure room. I, I don't think you can quite, it was just like Beatles at, you know. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. I, I never experienced anything like it. And uh, I really am very popular there. I just had a major solo there of 155 works, which basically sold out. Wow. And again, I was mobbed and uh, thousands of people came to visit. It was an incredible show. Uh, so, what, so, so what do you feel is, um, is your favorite city or favorite subject matter? What's the thing that makes you happiest all of all when you paint? Look, I can walk outside the studio here and do a nice little painting. I, the subject, it's probably the quality of light that I care about. But I must say, if you walk around Venice or Paris or one of those lovely cities, uh, there's a subject on every corner here. You have to kind of seek it out a bit. Yes. But I will say that as far as landscape goes, Australia leaves them for dead. Yeah. America has some, but it's kind of got that American feel to it. I don't relate to it. You know, the fir trees and things, the old gum tree and the, the so you can see through gum trees. Most other trees in other countries, you can't see them. You can't see through. So there's yeah. kind of like a, a walls and you don't see behind yeah. where we have this lace work and you can kind of travel, your eye can travel through the landscape. Also the lay of Australian landscape is really beautiful. There's Art Nouveau lines that lend themselves to free brush strokes, you know. Um, in Europe, everything is like a garden organized. Yeah, I can always remember when uh, I last saw you, which was in San Francisco at the Plain Air Conference, that you, that you said, and your last name begins with Z for a start, but you always sort of said, make sure you've got a Z somewhere I, in the beginning as it goes through. Z composition. <laughs> yeah. Look, the, <laughs> the, look the, 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 the Z name actually did come from America, and that is they could not pronounce my name. No yeah. way, no how. So they just said, oh, Mr. Z. They say Z, they don't say Z. So it kind of stuck and uh, I met a man there and he made my first business card. I was useless with that sort of stuff. And we decided to put a, a Z on it and it stuck. And now I get letters and emails from all over the world. People send me photos. There's a Z uh, motel chain in Canada. There's Z taxes in Moscow. There's, oh, Z couriers. There's Z this, Z that. And people see it, you know, they even see cloud formation in Z and they'll send you a photo. So as a marketing exercise, it's really worked. You should get one. Pick a letter. <laughs> Gee, wow, that's an S, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so what is in store for, uh, for Lisa and for yourself in the next, well, obviously after COVID, but what do you guys have planned in the next, say, 12 months, uh, considering what's, what's actually happened in the last six Yes, yes. Well, look, we've been painting. So the artist's life didn't change that much through during lockout, except we couldn't go out on location past 5K for the last three months. But uh, we have got plans. Lisa just scored a major uh, commission with a company developing some land that wants some paintings of the surrounding land that use for promotion. And we've also booked a show at Red Hill Gallery in Brisbane uh, in April, a combined show, Lisa and I. So I've got to pull my socks up because she's bloody good, you know. Yeah, get some work, get some work. Well, with Margaret Rona Campbell. Yes. yes. So yeah. with Margaret, yes, yes. I've been with them. Well, I was originally with uh, Helen and I forget his name, Bill. Yeah. And uh, that was years and years ago. So I've been with that gallery for about 25 years or something like that. Yeah. And Margaret, great operator. Uh, sadly, Graham is gone now. But, you know, um, it's a great gallery. It's a credit to her, the way she runs it. It's just fantastic. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, Joe and Lisa, <clears throat> thank you so much for your time. It's just incredible that um, I, I always knew it was going to happen, that you were the first one that was going to get a million views. And, and literally since from yesterday to today, there's been another 400 people view that show just in the last 24 hours. So I think it's sort of started to go a little bit viral from what I can see anyway. So... Uh, let's 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 look towards two or three million, and we'll go from there. All right, mate. we'll go for ten. 
<laughs> yeah, ten million. That sounds good. It's, <laughs> you're a man that shoots for the heavens. Absolutely. So, but That's thank it. you. Well, lovely to see you again, Graham. Yeah, and, we'll, and, and I'd love to come down and, and film you and Lisa at some stage in the future when we're out of this this chaos. I mean, this madness. Man, yeah, but but I mean, yeah. obviously, it was eight years ago that we filmed you, and and literally, people still rave. I mean, they use that as a as a as a base for what they're doing right across yeah. the world. It's just amazing what you've done. It is remarkable. The the legacy I'm leaving behind is quite remarkable. I, I look at. Uh, people's work I can see traces of my what I call visual language in there and I don't get angry about it I, I really like it I don't like people copying my work straight out I, I really don't enjoy that yeah. but if they use the similar language and make their own statements I, I don't mind I, it's, I see it as a contribution to the part well, as Picasso said, don't copy, steal. And that's what they do. Well, thank you so much, Bud. I, I absolutely appreciate your time. You're an amazing human being and uh, I respect you thoroughly and thank you for spending the time with me today. Good on you, Graham. Cheers. We'll see you again. Thank you, Bud.